Q&A where I take a couple of minutes to answer questions that you guys have. Today, I have a question that I get a lot as well. Um, I'm trying to cover all of the questions which I get most of the time first. Uh, this one I get a lot from beginners who, before they've started learning, they want to know how much time they're going to have to invest into learning iOS programming before they can build their own apps. So the question that I get is usually phrased like this. How long will it take me to learn iOS programming? Now, this is a really hard question to answer because obviously it depends on how much time you have to dedicate to it. Um, but I can give you a general idea of the learning curve and what that's like from what I've observed uh, with my own students. So usually for someone with no programming experience, uh, they're very quickly able to build some simple apps, basically understand um, some simple logic, um, construct some simple user interfaces and get an app working in Xcode in their simulator. And I think that is a very, very good first step because it, it gives students a sense of accomplishment. And usually this can be done in maybe one or two sessions. By sessions, I mean maybe one or two hours. So maybe in total, two sessions would be two to four hours that yeah, you could build your very first demo, maybe even quicker than that, depending on how easy it is. But um, after that point, I think it gives you that initial rush that, you know, you can do this. Uh, and it will prompt you to dig deeper into it. And for a lot of people, what usually happens is that after creating that demo uh, and they dig deeper into it, they start to hit a little bit of frustration. And the reason for that is because the initial demo usually is a very easy kind of like follow what I do type of thing. Click here, click there. Um, just so you can, you know, help the students get their feet wet and get them excited. Um, but then following that, when you actually have to learn um, mechanics and concepts of the programming language and, um, you know, different programming design patterns and stuff like that, it starts getting into territory where, um, you know, it's foundational knowledge that you need to know, but it might not be, you know, the funnest thing to learn. So in my courses that I offer on my site, I try to incorporate these concepts um, into building a, a slightly more complex app. Um, just so it's not as dry. So it's not like you're, you know, you're reading a textbook or something like that. Uh, so that seems to work well. Um, and then also, after that initial demo app, you're, you're starting to build slightly more complicated apps. And even with the most seasoned programmers, you're going to have bugs. Uh, and bugs are basically um, either logic that you coded incorrectly or maybe it was even incorrect logic to begin with. So you start running into errors in your app uh, and then you're going to have to figure out how to solve them. So there's a little bit of problem solving and there's a little bit of debugging, which is just the process of finding the source of those errors and resolving them. So there's a little bit of that, which some people may not find, um, you know, as fun. So at this point, some people give up because it turns out that learning programming is harder than they thought or more time intensive than they thought. Uh, so I always caution, it's really important to have the appropriate mindset, expectations and goals when you learn iOS programming. You know, you're learning a skill and you want to come out knowing that skill. If you just want kind of the end result and you don't really care about learning programming at all, then uh, maybe you should consider buying uh, app templates or hiring someone to build the app, which you know, you might find more success with. So anyways, you're learning the programming language at this point. Um, it's getting a little bit frustrating, but then once you kind of get through this hump, it's what I call the hump. Once you get past this semi difficult part, um, your world kind of opens up because uh, once you understand it and it clicks, then you're just off to the races and you can, you know, whatever you want to do in your app, there's probably a tutorial out there for it. And whereas before you couldn't understand that tutorial because you didn't have that foundational knowledge, uh, you couldn't read code and you didn't understand the concepts, but now you do. So all of these tutorials and possibilities are open to you and kind of the sky's the limit at this point. Uh, and so for a lot of people, once they make it past that hump, they discover the joy of building apps and, and programming.
So that's kind of the learning curve. Um, how fast you go through it will depend on, you know, whether you dedicate a couple of hours a day or maybe a couple of hours every couple of days or something like that. And it'll depend on, you know, how fast it clicks for you because programming is, is very logic based. Um, so if you're not used to that kind of thinking, then it may take some people longer. For some people, it may take faster. But the one thing I advocate is that don't just read or watch videos. You have to, have to, have to practice. And, and that means you need a Mac, and that means you need Xcode, or maybe some of the other um, solutions which I outlined in another Q&A video for the PC. But you have to practice. And... Because I found that by practicing, that is actually the fastest way to learn. Uh, for me, when I first started learning, I just read the book cover to cover. And when I wanted to start, I didn't know how to start. I realized that I understood all the material while I read it, but I didn't understand how to apply it. So when you're reading that tutorial, you're watching that lesson, it's important to stop um, and then try it out for yourself. And you're going to encounter problems. Uh, but... Part of it is that after you figure out, you know, how to overcome that problem, it it almost becomes a memory in your head and uh, helps you remember the concepts and what you're learning a lot faster than if you had just read it or watched it. So what I usually do when people ask me this question, just to summarize, is that I take the amount of video in my course, which is about 27 hours, and then I just tack on about an hour and a half for every hour of video. So I usually say something like dedicate 60 hours, uh, 60 to 75 hours to the course. And how fast you get through that course will depend on how much time you spend on it day to day. Uh, and after finishing that course, you will be able to build your own simple apps and put together, you'll be able to read and write code, put together user interfaces, make multiple screen apps and stuff like that. But then if you wanna learn the more slightly advanced stuff where you're working with databases and web services and you know you're transferring data or saving photos to a database sitting in some server like that is the next step then you have to dedicate more time to learning that stuff uh, if you just want to count you know getting down the basics you're able to build your simple basic apps then i'd say you know to get through my course at least is about 75 hours so i hope that answers your question and I hope you guys enjoyed it and will join me for the next Q&A. Now, if you found this helpful, I would really appreciate it if you followed, subscribed, liked, and rate, uh, and share it with your friends and colleagues. Thank you so much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.